Ladies and gentlemen, PMI Ghana President, Ms. Jumoke Lafenwa. A round of applause for her. And she gave us an overview of what to expect in these two days that we're going to be here. And she topped it up with the fact that tomorrow's evening's awards is going to be something that you should not miss. So ladies and gentlemen, let us all have a wonderful day here. In the meantime, we're about to invite our special guest speaker to join us here on stage. And before that, I have a bit of information that I would like to share with all of you. He happens to be the director at Distinct Management Limited, an independent project management consultancy focusing on information technology, construction, and business transformation. He provides project program and portfolio management consultancy and interim management services to a broad international client portfolio and assist organizations to deliver value through the effective implementation of their projects and programs and the delivery of their organizational strategic and corporate objectives. Over 25 years, he has managed portfolios and led the delivery of multi-million dollar projects and programs across diverse sectors for a diverse range of multinational organizations across the United Kingdom and Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, with a round of applause, please, our special guest of our special guest speaker, Mr. Ike Wanko. Good morning. It is, it is actually an honor to be here today. Um, and I, I'd like to thank uh, um, Jumoke and the PMI Ghana chapter for welcoming me here today. One thing that wasn't mentioned is that I'm a Nigerian as well. And as a Nigerian coming to Ghana, there's one thing I told myself I must do. And I thank the chef of this hotel for making a special version of jollof rice. <laughs> so that I can now make that fundamental decision around what is better, the Nigerian jollof rice or the Ghanaian jollof rice. And I'll leave my verdict till later. But thank you all for giving me that opportunity to be part of that discussion around jollof rice. <laughs> so, so I'm here today, really, on behalf of the PMI Board of Directors, okay? There are 12 members of the um, PMI Board of Directors for which I'm one. Now, sometimes you hear people talk about PMI globally as PMI USA. And I'd like to correct that perception because within the board of PMI globally, we have myself, who's not American. I'm Nigerian, as I said myself. We have people from Mexico, Poland, New Zealand, Australia, US, obviously. So PMI is a global organization. And one of the things we try to do as a global organization is through our chapters, e.g. Um, PMI Ghana chapter, to show that global nature for which we are as an organization. And a part of our new strategy in the last two years to make sure we connect better with our local chapters is we have created regions, now eight regions, for which we have an Africa region, which now allows PMI as an organization to also focus on Africa and the specific needs of Africa, while the chapter also focuses on the specific needs of the local chapter. That way we can bring the profession of project management together globally and share experiences um, amongst ourselves to make development work, to make project management as a profession grow, and to encourage more people governments, organizations, to get involved with project management because project management is the way things get done. So today, I'm here to talk about preparing for the future of project management. Now, a bit of technology test. Woo! So PMI does extensive research. PMI does extensive research. Is the presentation showing? for other people, because I can see it here, but I don't know if other people can see the presentation. 
So PMI does extensive research. And what is about to show on the screen is that there are three particular research articles that I'm going to reference to determine what we believe the future of project management should be and how yourselves as either change makers, organizations, or project professionals should adapt and change and prepare yourself for the future of project management. Report one is the Global Trends Report of 2022. That looks at what is happening in the world today. How can we use what is happening in the world today to further develop our profession, to prepare ourselves for what might happen in the future? The Global Mega Trends talks about six major trends that have happened in the world that will shape how we think about work, how we think about projects, how we think as individuals to deliver, de develop ourselves to become better project professionals. Then we've got the pulse of the profession, which PMI has been um, publishing annually since 2006. Again, extracts for that tell us what we need to do as individuals and organizations to prepare ourselves for the future of project management. And of recently, PMI has also specifically looked into Africa and done a specific report about success of PMOs in Sub-Saharan Africa. Now from these three articles, as well as discussions with individuals, project professionals, big consultancies, database research, uh, and many other avenues, we have put together what we believe is a key fundamental element of the future of project management and how we prepare ourselves to get to that point. So what I'll start off first with is look at the global megatrends. What is it telling us about the future? Well, this, so the first global me megatrend, and sure, should not be a surprise, digital disruption. What has it done in the past year and in the future? We've heard about artificial intelligence. We've heard about um, uh, Internet of Things. Various technologies today have shaped the way we move forward in the future. Those technologies of today, there's still many, 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 many more to come that will change how we think, how we deliver projects, how we go about our, uh, our work today. It has transformed the way we move forward. And as project managers, we have to be aware of what these digital disruptions are doing to our projects, how we can adapt to better utilize them, and in many instances, how we can adapt to make sure that we don't get left behind because there's something called digital exclusion. So, so in, in, in areas like Africa, how do we adapt if we can't move at, at the pace where, in quotes, other countries may be using? How do we adapt better to use the same technology to provide the same benefits? Now, as project managers, we need to understand that. We need to adapt and, and, and build that into how we deliver projects. As organizations, you need to be aware that digital disruption is happening and will continue to happen. So you have to prepare yourselves for how you go about either embracing it or being prepared for it going forward. That's the first mega trend. The second mega trend, climate crisis. We all know what climate does. We've talked about global warming in the past. We've talked about droughts in, in various, various um, other aspects of the world. It affects different people, different countries in different ways. But it is a fundamental thing that we have to be aware of. And today you hear words like sustainability. Make sure we're building sustainability in everything we do. So as project managers now going forward, we now have to continuously think, how do we make sure that when we're delivering projects, we're being sustainable? That we're continuing to maintain um, situations and circumstances to better protect our planet and the environment in everything we do. And there are various examples across the world where we have continued to look at sustainability, like wastage and plastic bottles. And I read an article recently where they're combining plastic bottles to make um, a little boat in order to ship. That is thinking, that is innovation, and that is what we as project managers preparing for the future need to be bear in mind all the time. So if you're doing a project, think about the sustainability aspect of that project. 
Because the future will be talking about sustainability. The future will be looking into how your projects manage, sust manage itself sustainably. So as project managers, prepare yourself. Have the right mindset to have that ready. The third, economic shifts. What has happened recently, especially with the pandem pandemic, has been supply chain dependencies have changed. E.g. with the um, um, Russia-Ukraine um, crisis, what happened to the oil and petrol or gas? It created problems. And what the world has be begun to realize is that you have to now think about your supply chain. The dependency on single sources for your supply is changing. So, and then what that has caused in the recent time is that projects have been delayed. There has been wastage around projects. And you as a project manager or project professional need to bear that in mind. These economic shifts could potentially and drastically affect your projects. They could potentially and drastically forget your, affect your organization in the delivery of its services. But as project managers, that's what we're there to do. We need to anticipate these things and prepare ourselves for these things. So the future, it may happen more because they say change is constant. So as project managers, we need to bear, bear, bear that in mind. The fourth is demographic shift. And the graph there is quite interesting because what it tells us for the first time since data has been collected, that there are more aging people, and they say aging, when I saw the data and they said aging is from 65, I started getting worried myself. But what they're saying is that aging population now is greater than the, the younger population across the world. Luckily, Africa is different because Africa has the largest number of youth. But it's going to tell us something if we look at data, that we have to prepare ourselves. We've got aging population and we've got young population. How do we manage that economic shift? How do we manage that demographic? What do we do about it? And how can we as project managers prepare ourselves for that future shift the, or the existing shift where we have more youth compared to aging, and I use that word, aging population? As project managers, we have to bear that in mind. And then we have to be prepared for it. Labor shortages. In America, they talk about the great resignation. It's a part of it. Because what has happened of recent is people have been becoming more aware of the type of work they need to do, the type of work they want to do. As project managers, we also should be aware of it. But it creates opportunities as well. Because what has happened across, um, especially in places like Africa, where employment might be different rates, is that now the globe, the world is open. The world is open for everybody. And we see so many articles about people being employed from here, working remotely from here, but for an international company. Labor sh shortages have created a dynamic shift that in Africa can be made um, use of. And that's one thing we have to bear in mind. What does that do, do to our organization? How do we, in one, prevent a shift so that we don't leave, lose our talent? Or how do we now utilize and engage our talent so they're keen to stay? But we need to understand these dynamics. And when you're working on your project or as an organization, these dynamics are critical to understand. I believe the last one is civic, civil, and equity movements. When you look at that, you talk about people coming together. The principle behind it is that people come together today. People are ready to push forward what they believe in, to push forward for that right. These things happen not only on the streets, where sometimes you see it a lot, but they happen in boardrooms. They happen amongst your teams because everybody is showing a particular interest in trying to get value a particular interest in trying to deliver a result, a particular interest in trying to do good. This has become critical in terms of how we move forward and in terms of what we do and how we prepare ourselves for the future of project management. So what does all this mean? The global trends, the six global trends, how does that impact us? In fact, how does it help us prepare for the future of project management? How does it help us as organizations prepare ourselves so that we have project managers able to deal with the trends, able to prepare themselves for the future? What needs to happen? What does it mean? Well, one thing that came out from that study 
is that a new ecosystem is emerging. And when I say ecosystem, Jumoke touched on what we call the project economy. A new ecosystem now is appearing, based on all this, that says the ways of working must change. It must change, and you must focus on accelerating value. We know that in the, in, in the past, for any new invention or for something new to come out, it used to take 10 years, 15 years. Today, it is one, two, three years for technology changes, for major um, impacts to change across the world. Now, how do we prepare ourselves for it? We need to prepare ourselves for a new way of working. We need to prepare ourselves to ensure that we constantly and frequently deliver on value. But that's not all. Our research also says, when we interviewed a number of people, that, and I'll go through this data as it points there, 79% of CEOs said lack of key skills is a threat to their business. And I guess you'll ask yourselves, key skills, yeah? What does that mean? To the left of that, PM as a key skill, key skill by McKenzie reports, it said it was the most important, one of the nine important and growing skill sets that is needed. So the world is identifying that project management is a key skill and will be a key skill for the future, based on research. The same research from another organization, and it's their PwC, says 55% that a gap in key skills is imp impacting um, organizations. And when we look at project management as a key skill, the world is telling us that there's something lacking. We need more project managers. And I go around some data around that. But the future is, if the ways of working are changing, we need more project managers. And the, and the last point there said, 75%, 79%, sorry, of executives agree that the future of work and remember I said the ways of working must change. The future of work will be based more on speci specific projects than roles. And that is actually saying that if you really want to get something done, do it as a project for the main principle of what a project is. So if you really want to get something done, what's, what data is telling us, what the future is telling us, is that you need to do that as a project. I was talking with somebody yesterday um, in the bar, and he mentioned that in, in, in his organization, project management, his boss believes that project management is the glue that gets the organization moving together. And that was a powerful statement, because even though you're doing work, the key thing to, end, to get results is through project management. And organizations are beginning to understand that. We as project managers are also beginning to understand that, that the way to get things done is to do it through projects. In our 2021 Pulse of, the Prefe Pulse, of Pulse of the Profession report, as I mentioned earlier, it also talked about how things should be done. If we enable our change makers, and when I use the word change makers, I'm talking about pro project professionals, people involved in projects, uh, people who are, don't directly identify themselves as project managers, because there are quite a lot of that. You know, Some architects actually do project management. Uh, in, 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 in their field, and there are others that don't want to call themselves project managers, but actually involved in the process of delivering projects. But they said, these people are better able to respond and sense um, shock, shocks, sy systemic changes, and they drive change for the future. So once you are in our space as project managers or project professionals or change maker, you're able to be prepared for going forward for the future of project management. Again, that is telling us a lot. It's not narrowing it down to what we should be doing. I talked earlier about um, data. The middle column there says 25 million new project management employees are needed by 2030. 25 million data. That just says that, that shift I talked about earlier is happening. People are beginning to understand the value of project management. And therefore, more and more demand for project managers is the future. And current data says 25 million across the world. And no matter what the data says, 
at least one million should be apportioned to Africa. If I want to put some data across there, it might be more because we have youth and we have, we, we have um, you know, people and youth. But that is fantastic data to say that the future of project management is there. It is there to stay. So, the trick sometimes when one is standing up here speaking, it, it sounds like it's my view. So, I'm going to show a, view, a, a video of what other project professionals have said about the future of project management. When I look ahead of the future, I think that the biggest challenge will be understand really the work of artificial intelligence and where is the place for project managers and people working in projects. The changes of project management processes, the changes of the way project managers work will definitely be more reliant on technology. And that's going to increase the importance um, of how people work together and collaborate. And it's going to grow an increasingly important component of personal skills, collaboration skills, and leadership skills that go above and beyond the traditional technical skills of project management. But we need to prepare the machines to deliver our projects better so we're not doing the repetitive tasks ourselves. So we're not... When I look ahead of the future, I think that the biggest challenge will be understand really the work of artificial intelligence and where is the place for project managers and people working in projects. The changes of project management processes, the changes of the way project managers work will definitely be more reliant on technology. And that's going to increase the importance um, of how people work together and collaborate. And it's going to grow an increasingly important component of personal skills, collaboration skills, and leadership skills that go above and beyond the traditional technical skills of project management. But we need to prepare the machines to deliver our projects better so we're not doing the repetitive tasks ourselves. So we're not reactive to the market, we create the next market of project management. The future of project management is, I would say, disrupted. Fast delivery, compressed cycles, as well as fast failure, if that is the case. Leading business with agility. Any future development should reflect that. I think in future of project management, it will be more agile and more business related. Because these days we talk about value. In order to understand the value of that project, you need to understand the business. You gotta have the technical management skills the leadership skills, but we'll also understand the business. In a global environment, it's going to be more diverse cultures coming into the workplace. Therefore, a different take on skills, different time zones, totally different business practices. So you need to plan for those challenges. We need to take care of our environment, to take care of our planet, to go for sustainable projects, projects that they care of the human being. When we talk about DevOps and we talk about Agile, I'm asked, do you those kind of methodologies um, re strip away the, the need for a project manager? I think absolutely not. Um, I think we are in need of even more project managers in the future. We are getting more and more project oriented in, in our businesses, in our societies. Artificial intelligence will uh, take some of the jobs, but uh, I think they cannot be a leader. So, as a project manager, if you are a good leader, you are going to continue to perform your profession. So, as project managers, we have to get better at leading teams and leading people, working with people, and find ways to include automation in what we do while still maintaining our human aspect, our humanity. It's difficult to see something clear in the future, but we should uh, stay prepared uh, to face uh, with flexibility 
new challenges, new situation. Be prepared to change into something completely different. Be prepared. Be prepared to change into something totally different. That, that is part of the future of project management, being prepared. But again, I point back to how do you get yourself prepared? How can you prepare yourself for the future? What data has shown us um, of recent is that every professional now to be prepared for the future must be capable of a number of things. And in this particular report, four things were identified. Complex problem solving. I think that goes without saying that if you need to prepare yourself for the future, things are going to get complex. You have to be able to solve complex problems. If we look at um, the COVID situation, that was a complex problem. And there are project managers and change makers all over the place coming together to solve that complex problem. Hence, a vaccine was created in six months. And you, ha you hear things like co-opetition, where competitors came together to solve that complex problem. That was innovative thinking. This is what project managers of the future need to be aware of. And when I say project managers of the future, I'm also talking about organizations. Organizations need to be open to the concept that com complex problem solving is a key skill. It's a key, th key thing that they need to train and make their uh, employees more aware of. The second thing was about getting things done. I've always said that project management as a core is about getting things done. But you must be capable of getting things done. You must have the key knowledge around project management and the necessary skills that support it. So when we say project management, we're not only talking about management, we're talking about leadership. We're talking about other key skills. And I'll go into more details of that um, as, as I go along. But these competencies are necessary so that you as a project manager, you within your organization, or the organization itself is able to realize project and business benefits. The third is transformation ready. So you need to be aware of the processes for conducting organizational transformation. Because not only do you have it at project level, you have it at organizational level. And as a project professional preparing for the future, you have to be ready for that. Because you have to be ready for driving meaningful change. Bearing in mind the, glo um, the, the global mega trends, what it talks about um, in terms of sustainability, you have to start thinking about aspects around that. Agility goes without saying, the fourth. We cannot, and I repeat, we cannot continue to just wait. We have to be able to adapt as individuals, as organizations, to the constantly changing aspect of the world and the nature of business that we do today. We can't be waiting. As the economy, global trends, and things shift, as organizations and individuals, you have to have that ability to adapt and be agile. Also, in a particular survey that was done around Sub-Saharan Africa, certain skills were identified as top skills for um, the future project manager or future organizations. One, strategic thinking. Again, this is saying that the future project managers need to be strategic. It's no more, I have a project, I deliver it, uh, at the end of the project, it stops there. You need to think beyond that. You need to think around the, the, the organization as a whole. You need to think of delivery of value. You need to think about sustainability. You need to have that strategic mindset. The second one is adapting for different projects and teams. The world is getting global. A multicultural team is actually known as a very good team. But we need to be able to adapt. People will leave and move on. There are different ways of working today that happen. You have to have that um, skill and ability to adapt and work with different projects across different 
terrains, across different countries, across different teams. Third one is creating problem solving. And we talked about that earlier in the, in the first one. Complex problem, problem solving or creative problem solving. I talked about using the empty bottles to create a boat in order to create sustainability and income for the individuals in that particular um, region. That is creative problem solving. We need to look at ways within our projects, within our communities, within our organizations to be creative around solving problems. This collaborative leadership. And the way I look at this sometimes is that you don't have to lead alone. Again, when I was talking to somebody, if you have done something good, feel free to share it. Feel free to explain what you've done well within your project to others. That is collaborative leadership. That is working together to get the, the same end result. Commercial awareness, the fifth and last one there from that study, is specifically saying that the future project manager has to be commercially aware. It's no longer about just doing a project and there. You need to understand the commercial aspects around the project that you're leading. And I'll talk more around how we bring these um, different um, research aspects and research points together. Now, what has PMI, what is or what has PMI done to prepare for the future project managers or to prepare for the future of project management? Now, in the past, we used to hear about the talent triangle, um, budget, sorry, time, cost, and quality. That was a talent triangle. So we, as within the project management profession, are quite comfortable with a triangle. That ty talent triangle over time, and we talked about being agile and adapting, has changed. And the last iteration, maybe two years back, was now what it should be. And then we talked about technical project management at the time. And a technical project management is the physical technical skills you need, knowing around tools and processes. Then it talked about leadership at the time, because you have to lead to be a project, an effective project management manager. And then it talked about strategic and business management. But in preparing for the future, that has to change. Because I said earlier, the future has so many different things. Nobody can predict the future, but you need to prepare yourself for the future. And PMI, in preparing itself for the future, has looked at its talent triangle and had looked what better triangle can we put together that will get mindsets and project professionals thinking and ready for the future. So the talent triangle has changed. It has evolved. Now we have ways of working, which is critical. And I'll go into some details of that, but I'll give you a high level. As I said earlier, ways of working are changing. You have agile, waterfall, hybrid, blah, blah. That's simply a way of working. And there may be many more. In fact, there are probably some ways of working that exist today that haven't come out. But in preparing for the future, ways of working is a key element of what we do as project professionals. Business acumen, the next one. Again, previous survey talked about commercial awareness. We put it together as business acumen. You need to understand the business around the project that you're delivering. You need to understand the business around the organization in which you're working. Organizations themselves need to understand what you want about the business. Because if you can bring these two together, then you have a collaborative approach towards delivering the same output, the same benefit for that business. If you don't understand why your organization wants to do A or B, and you step back and say, well, my role is purely to get project A delivered on time to budget. If it doesn't go to budget or time, it doesn't really matter because, you know, at least it's got to the end. No, that doesn't work because you have to understand the business aspect of it as well. Power skills. Power skills to me is one of the most critical aspects of the future of project management. And I'm going to go into the details behind each one of them so that you can read while I talk about power skills. On the power skills, we have several things. Leadership, we've talked about. Active listening. We've always wanted to listen as project professionals, but active is saying, 
Listen. Listen not only to your team, but to what's happening in the environment. Communication. Simple. We all know that more than 70% of what we do is communication. Adaptability, we talked about that. Brainstorming. Brainstorming as a key skill, power skill, is extremely important because that's where new ideas come from. That's where innovation comes from. Then it goes on with coaching and mentoring, conflict management, emotional intelligence. And I'll talk more about emotional intelligence in a different way. Influencing interpersonal skills, negotiation, problem solving, and teamwork. All key principles that we now need to understand better as project managers. Now, one, one thing I've always said is that projects do not deliver themselves. People deliver projects. Now, if people deliver projects, then people have to have the right skill to deliver the projects. Because you cannot have a project and leave it there and say, go away and deliver yourself. So if you're a project manager, you need to understand that it's the people you work with. It's you that actually delivers the project. If you're an organization, you also need to understand that it's your people that deliver the project. And therefore, it's important that your people have the right skills to deliver the project. And one of the key things, since we're talking about people and we're talking about humanizing projects, is to make sure that your people are content and they have the necessary skills and understanding to deliver your project. And power skill, one of the most important trends that we need to. Business acumen you build, ways of working, we know the tools and techniques and that we need to do, but we need to develop more on the people side, on the power skills. The other thing around that is that I hear so much about AI, artificial intelligence, is going to take over our jobs, it's going to be the new future. The answer to that is yes, it is. But I, I use the example of a cow. In the early days, we had the abacus move around. That was technology then. It didn't take over anything because the calculator came in. What did we do? We just made calculations faster. So instead of using the abacus at the time, the calculator came out, oh, you popped in the numbers, and then we're doing things faster. Oh, calculator, new technology, wow. Then, using a similar example, Microsoft Excel came out, or maybe Lotus 123, depending on what you know. Oh, yeah, now you can put macros, you can do things like that. It didn't take over what we did. It simply allowed us to do things faster. So what AI, when we talk about um, the future, is AI is going to help us do things better. As in the interview, they said, A AI can't lead. It's not going to do that. So some of the routine processes that we used to do, AI is going to help us there. By helping us do that, it now allows us to deliver our projects better. But if AI is doing some of these routine processes, what is left? It is make sure that you've got your team. Your team is happy. Your team working. Your, the collaborative aspect of your team. The empathy, the emotional intelligence around teamwork is there. And that's why power skills to me is one of the most important of, of the um, talent triangle for the future. Because technology is here to stay. Okay? And therefore, we have to understand that we can use these technologies better, but we have to have the power skills in order to support the, the entire project economy. This is straight. I'll just go back. One more. So I'm going to show another brief video just, just to look into the other aspect of what we need to do to prepare ourselves for, for the future. And what um, is an interview between Mike DeFisco, interim CEO of um, um, PMI, and a gentleman called and Antonio. This is Straight Talk. I have to ask you a question uh, related to the pandemic because, you know, it's taught us a lot um, in terms of how we need to have a mindset that allows us to oh anticipate some of these big disruptions that may be on the horizon, and more importantly, how we can adapt and manage that change um, successfully. We talk about having a perpetual transformation mindset to be ready for anything. How can project professionals evolve to that next level and play a much more significant role going above and beyond uh, the, the perimeter and, and being strategic advisors and value creators, as you said? Mike, I think this is the crucial question where people are listening for what they should be doing. And I've analyzed a lot of cases and 
I come to the conclusion, of course the tri talent triangle is, is, is key here, the PMI talent triangle where we talk about uh, the technical project management skills. I would include agile and, and change and everything in that field of the technical project management skills. You have the bottom, which is what you're saying, Mike, the strategic uh, and the business acumen, understanding where you're working, what's the priorities of the organization, how your project will contribute, and then the leadership aspect, uh, which is about knowing how to work in teams, emotional intelligence, knowing who you are and how you want to evolve. So this absolutely is the basis. But for me, the biggest change that we need to bring is the mindset. We were talking about that before, Mike. I think we've been, at least my feeling when I've been doing project management PMO director for many years is I felt I was, I was doing the job for somebody else. I was delegated to create a plan and, and then I didn't feel like accountable for the results. I felt accountable for delivering on time. And, and back to that feel, uh, kind of need that we feel accountable for the benefits that I always say you need to feel like the CEO of your project you're you're uh, uh, you're founder of the idea right and and you'll fight for it and you will call the CEO if your problem if your project is at risk you should be able to call the CEO of your company say listen my project has a big issue if it's a big project and it's strategic so we need to step up and say, well, we are executives. We're executives like anybody here in the room. And we have the right to, to step up, to talk to other executives saying, hey, you're not doing your job and my project is at stake, we're going to fail. So I think that sense of ownership and, and fighting for our projects uh, should be the biggest mind shift change that we'll bring to the game. And we did that with the pandemic, like you say. We took, we step up, we said we need that, otherwise we're out of business. Let's keep doing that. And I think that's going to just make our, our profession shine. I'm 100% sure about that. <clears throat> we need to act like the CEO of our projects. That is the future. Organizations need to accept that you as project professionals are acting like the CEO of that project. And as acting like the CEO of that particular project you're working on, you need to understand the business around that particular project. So to conclude, projects, we now live in a projectized environment. Projects are how work gets done. And organizations understand that now. If you want to get something done, do it through project. As an individual, as an organization, that is the future. Upskilling is imperative. You need to have the necessary skills in order to deliver value and benefits in the project economy. Upskill yourself, retrain yourself, continuously learn. And if you're an organization, you need to understand that the project professionals within your organization or people need to be skilled. Get your, what's the word now? Make sure you imbibe the philosophy of training your project professionals, your staff, with the right skills in order to help you as an organization deliver. And as I said there, prioritize on power skills because power skills is one of the elements that we need to use in order to ensure that we can deliver on our objectives in the future. The final one, and I'll add another word to that, is the PMN tri tri talent triangle. Use that to understand what you need to do to prepare yourself for the future. And as the last speaker said, mindset is also important, critically important. Have the right mindset. Make sure your organiz organizations have the right mindset so that when you're going about delivering projects for, for your organization, or the organization itself understands you're delivering um, projects, they know that you have the right mindset to do that. And let me say, when I talk about the future of project management, you look at the future as being five, 10 years. But the future starts today. In fact, the future in the world we live in today is always today. <laughs> Because the change is so fast and so consistent, so that when we talk of the future of project management, and when I use the word future, I'm actually saying from today, from when you leave this room, from when you step up for lunch or break for water, that is the future. It has started. So you need to prepare yourself today 
for that future because it constantly changes. And in final conclusion, PMI as an organization has a winning aspiration and that winning aspiration is to empower people, and we've talked about empowerment and preparing for the future, to make ideas, your ideas, those things that change things, those things that get our projects delivered, a reality. On that note, I'd like to say thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, our special guest speaker from Nigeria, Mr. Ike Inwanko. A round of applause for him. He brought us the breaking news and the faces of change that one needs to adapt in the world today to become a better project manage manager. However, he failed to give us the verdict for the Ghana Nigeria Jalof. And Mr. Inwanku, I just want to tell you this morning that the answer is staring the faces of every Ghanaian here. So whether you give us the verdict or not, we have the answer. All right, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we are not here alone. Our online partners are here with us, and we're going to give them some few minutes to change into the next room before our next speaker steps on stage. So please, some few minutes. Our online partners who are watching us, they started with us, and they were here earlier than all of us. We're going to give them that opportunity to change into the next room so that they can actually be able to listen to our next speaker. So let's just give them about two, three minutes. Thank you very much. Sorry. I was looking at this new triangle with the business acumen, the ways of working, and then the power skills. And I'm wondering, aren't these already the fundamental skills that every project manager should have? And if that be the case, why are we now moving, apparently, from the old triangle that we have? Because having all these skills, you're still going to have to deliver within scope, budget, and timeline. It feels more like an augmentation, an enhancement of what we already do than a change. And knowing that people are usually very versed and slow accepting to change, do we need to target as a change or just uh, an enhancement on what we already know? Thank you. Um, thank you. Very, very good question. Um, I use the word evolved. Okay, so it's not it's evolving. Because as project professionals, we all know the standard triple constant. Um, triple constraint, you know, budget, time, and quality. We all know that. That is part of what we are about. That is what, when you train as a project manager, they tell you. So how do you take that as already there, as a fundamental? And then that's in some way felt so technical, okay? The future is not going very technical. Oh yeah, I've got a project, this is a budget, this is the time, that's, and I'm just doing it. And remember the last speaker said, we have to move beyond that as project professionals. So why it's changed is to take it up a level so that we understand don't just say, I'm a project, this is a budget, and this is the time. If it goes out of time, does it mean the talent triangle is incorrect? If it goes out of time, standard procedure says change management, you go through change, you go through the process. But if you're thinking differently, and that's why I use the word mindset and the past skills, you're thinking differently. Sometimes that is required. I, in, in, my, in my history, I always get very upset when somebody says, oh, that project didn't meet budget. Now, was budget the key principle behind your business? Was that why they did it? What they wanted was an end result, okay? They wanted a service. So therefore, if the end result was perfect and you were over budget, it doesn't mean anything. But we are so focused on the fact that the project didn't go towards budget that we started losing the value and the benefits of, um, of um, uh, you know, the project you've done. I, won I once worked with a high network individual in my very, very early days. And I was in that mindset. And as we came, he made a change on site and said, we need to change this. And I said, that's going to increase the cost and everything. The expression he gave me, he just looked at me. Okay, he's a high net worth individual. Money, budget wasn't his concern. His concern is the end result. He wanted what he wanted. So that's why we focus on ways of working. Ways of working also includes remembering that you have to be aware of budget, you have to be aware of time, you have to be aware of all that. But you also have to adapt your methodology so in today's time, when you hear about waterfall, and the old days, we're all working on waterfall. Now you hear agile, we're all working on agile. No, 
the real principle is the end result. And how you get there can change along the line. So, you know, ideas like that are the fundamental things where we've taken it up a level. So we're not changing it. The, you know, the usual triple constraints still exist, but we've taken it up because mindset has to change. To be ready for the future, you need to start thinking slightly differently. And that's what this um, evolved talent triangle is trying to get at. I hope that helps in terms of answer. All right, so can we have the last question so that we can move on to our next speaker? Or are we all okay? Okay. Thank this you, sir. This meeting is being recorded. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. My name is uh, Habib Jao, and I'm a member from Mali. Pleasure to be here. Um, so I guess my question is, um, I have looking at your, I have been looking at your presentation, and I'm, I, I was wondering, where does organizational culture fit in all of this? Um, more specifically, um, in terms of uh, how can you create a business environment where your employees want to stay and where they can thrive? What can you tell us about that? Thank you. That's a very good question. Um, and it's, it's, it's always interesting when we look at the role of the PM, the project manager, because we have several roles. And sometimes we have to box it and understand where limit is within a project. So when you say organizational development, I look at it two ways. With my PM hat on, my organization is my project team. Okay? I'm working within a large organization, but for the purposes of delivering what I need to do, my organization is a project team. In order to do that better, I have to have the necessary power skills that I talked about. Okay? Within that power skills, we talked about collaborative leadership, we talked about collaboration as a whole, we talked about team building. That's what you need to have within the context of um, a, a team. Now, within the context of an organization, slightly differently because there are different controls in place. Every organization is different. different. But what I've always said, example, if you get your project team working well, the project members will want to stay with you. If you give them the power and the authority to make decisions, you're very clear around where the boundaries are. You know, you talk to them on an emotional basis, like find out what's happening on a daily basis, even outside the project. Connect with them. Get that mutual understanding. Don't overimpose yourself as a project leader on them. And then work with them and begin to respect you. Then you've got your own little organization working well. Other people will see how your team is working. When other people see how your team is working and effective, they will start changing their own team. And by the time you do it, it's a ripple effect that eventually the whole organization will see that your way of working, be it agile, be it being open and candid, being it stepping up for your team and taking the hit, whatever your principle that works within your team, and they see it working, and it spreads across the organization, then it eventually will become an organizational um, process. But you have to, within the remit as a PM, start within your team. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a presentation for our plenary speakers, all of them, and PMI Ghana President Jumoke Lafemwa will do the presentation. And this is just to tease you about what would happen tomorrow at the Project Management Excellence Awards, ladies and gentlemen. So let's just get ourselves ready for tomorrow. Thank you very much, Mr. Ike in Wanko. I hope I mentioned the name right this time around. Thank you. A round of applause for him for the last time, ladies and gentlemen.